Hi, I'm Terry, one of the Consumer Technology Specialists here at McContinent Public Library. And today we are going to start a series about Google Docs Basics. And to get us started, we're going to open Google Docs for the very first time, and then we're going to explore the menu bar and the toolbar. Because Google Docs is a web-based product, you will want to open a browser first. Now that might be Google Chrome, kind of keeping with the theme of Google Docs, or you could also open Firefox or Edge. And no matter which browser you choose, you want to go to the address bar, and then as you see, you will type docs.google.com and then press Enter. Well, now we're asked to sign in to our Google account. If you don't have one, you can always come to the lower left where you see that link to create an account. But if you do have an account, and it could even be just your Gmail account, then it's going to ask for your email or your phone. So I'll type mine in. But if I forgot which email I used to create a an account. I could also click on this forgot email link and I'll get assistance with that as well. Well on the lower right I'll click the next that blue button and now I'm asked for my password. Well I will type it but as I type it I notice that on the right I have an I that says show password so if I'm worried about how I'm typing I could always click on that I to see it. Now again, if I forgot my password, I can click on that link on the left, but we're going to click on Next. And this brings us to the home page of Docs, where as I look across the top, I have the logo for Docs. I have a search bar where I can search for documents that I've created. Below that, we have the blank document that we're going to come back to in just a second. To the right of that, we have templates that are pre-created uh, documents that we just need to sort of customize and fill in and make them our own. And then down below that, I have a list of the different documents that I've created in the past. Well, let's click on blank. And so now I have a new blank document and where I see this uh, blinking vertical line, I could start typing. But above that, I have the toolbar, which is really sort of like buttons with pictures. And above that, the menu bar that are the words File, Edit, View. And we're going to look at those next. Before we look at the toolbar in detail, there is one thing that we need to remember. And that is, while there are some buttons on the toolbar that are only on the toolbar, there are other options that are only with the menu bar. And then there are still a third set of options that are on both the menu bar and the toolbar, and you just pick which one works for you. Well, that being said, let's look at the toolbar, and we can see that there are some light gray sort of dividing lines that divide the toolbar into groups of buttons, and these buttons are somewhat related in what they do. Having said that, though, the very first group here has some very commonly used buttons, but they aren't necessarily overly related. For example, the first one here is undo, the next is redo, those are usually a pair, but the next button is a printer. So this is where you can print very quickly and easily, it just takes the default printer. To the right of that is spell check, which is used often, but not exactly related to printing. And then to the right of that, you have a, print, a paint formatter that lets you select the formatting that is in text and then copy that formatting to another uh, set of text on the page. To the right of that this says 100% and this is where you could zoom in and maybe go to 200% if you're looking for great detail or if you're looking for sort of the bird's eye view you might go to 50% and really look at the page layout instead. 
The normal text drop down is really for styles. It's usually uh, a more advanced option and it has to do with already created formatting for titles and headings specifically. Uh, to the right of that, you can change your fonts, and there are a lot of different fonts that you might decide to use. To the right of that is font size, and again, a lot of different options for changing the uh, default, which is 11, to another size that is maybe more readable. To the right of that, we have other ways to format text, and so we have bold, italics, underline. While this doesn't really look maybe like it's text color, that's what it is, that A with the bar underneath it. And to the right of that, you can add highlighting color to your text to point out certain pieces of that text. To the right of that, we have a link button where you can link to, say, um, a website or to another document. Going a little bit farther to the right, we have the alignment button and here we can align to the left or maybe center um, so that especially for maybe a sign of some kind you would want to center uh, the text on the page. To the right of that you have line spacing so instead of single spacing you might decide to have double spacing instead and you have other options as well. Uh, one of the favorite ones might be where I have these three dots with more and the very last one here lets you clear all of the formatting that is possible. Now let's look at some of the options in the menu bar and we'll start at the left with file and click on it to drop down and see some of the choices. Well, we could create a new document or we could open an existing one. Uh, under edit, we could undo or redo, which matches the first two buttons on the toolbar, but this is also where you could cut or copy and then paste text to another place within your document. And there's also this paste without formatting, which lets you pa paste just text only. Very helpful when you're pasting from um, a, an email. Now under view, you have print layout checked, which means that's the view that we can already see. And it also tells us here that we can see the ruler. Under insert, we have some options that let us do some things besides just type. For example, we can insert pictures or tables or charts or just a plain old horizontal line. We could add in some footnotes or special characters and equations that you can't type. They aren't on the keyboard. So maybe even a special character such as the uh, trademark symbol or um, maybe the a long, some sort of a division. Uh, equation type thing. You can also add in headers and uh, footers and page numbers from here. And under format, you have a lot of choices that are again on the toolbar. So for text, you have bold, italics, underline, but notice that it also adds in strike through, superscript, subscript, uh, capitalization that are not on the toolbar. With capitalization, you can change text to all lowercase, all lower uppercase, or even title case. Um, paragraph styles are about the same as what's on the uh, toolbar, as is this align and indent. The line spacing is also very similar to what you have on the uh, toolbar. And columns, well, now that is just with format. Bullets and numbering is also on the toolbar, but your options here are more advanced and expanded than what you have with the toolbar as well. Um, here then we have tools. And there are just some basic tools that you might be interested in, such as spelling and grammar or word count, uh, maybe even voice typing where you can just dictate what you want to have on the page rather than type. And then um, Google Docs has add-ons. And for people who are coming from Word to Google Docs, this may be very helpful because it has ways to then add on, say, the mail merge templates for labels, or it has a way to add on the show hide button, or at least an equivalent. So be sure to check the add-ons if there is something that you want to do with your document, but you don't see that option either in the toolbar or on the menu bar. To learn more about Google Docs, 
be sure to join us at mymcpl.org forward slash online learning. There you'll see such great resources as Universal Class, Lynda.com, Who Knew It, and Learning Express Library. Be sure to join us every week as we discuss a variety of tech topics.